Got a couple of questions for you because I want to I want to discuss you just expanding your empire. What sells good? <laughs> you know, it, you because you talked about your first machine. It was it was a soda machine. Mm -hmm. You also had a row of water. I'm assuming the markup on the water is a little bit, or the, or the percentage on the water is a little bit better than sodas. But yeah. if I want to get into the game, what am I, do, do I want to go into more canned sodas? And is there a reason why you don't do bottled sodas? Do I want to get into more healthy stuff like waters? Is the snack machines um, make most sense? Like what, what are the big sellers in this business? I would say, man, it's, it's really demographics. It comes down to your market, where you're at. Like, let's say, let's say you in LA. Like, LA is a, where, where are you at, matter of fact? First of all, New York. New York, all right, yeah, all right, you in New York. Let's say you in LA. You know, LA market is different. They real, like, they go to Whole Foods a lot. Like, they do that, that's that's they thing. Like, so over there, I might, I might, I might really want a healthy machine. Something, you know, where you could put some type of, uh, healthy stuff in some salads or something. I, I don't know, like you know that type of thing. Whereas, like if I'm in if I'm in New York, you know, uh, I'm putting, you know, I might just go the traditional route. And then it's also what's actually in there is in the price points is going to be determined by where the machine is, like too, because it, all right, without without being racist, right? So different different demographics like different things. So if I'm in uh, a place that has mostly uh, black people in it, right? From my experience, they like stuff with, with more flavor. So they gonna want the barbecue chips. They gonna want, you know, they gonna want the Doritos. Like they gonna, you know, what I'm saying stuff with flavor. Whereas though, if I'm in a place that that's more like uh, Caucasian people, they're gonna want more so like the plain, the plain chips, the big stuff. Like that's more so with sales in that area. Or if I'm in like a Spanish community, they might want like the spicy stuff. Like so. It really just depends where you're at, and then the same thing with the prices. Um, if I'm New York, uh, uh, a bag of chips might cost I don't know what y'all stuff costs, might dollar fifty or something like that. Whereas though in Philly, it might be cheaper. Um, same thing if you got a location that's in a hotel, your price is going to be higher than it would be if you were in a a barber shop. Like you understand, so it really just comes down to where you're at and what your uh, what your people want. Okay, so. What's the average markup on a product? The lowest, the lowest markup I do is, is double. Like so, wherever I pay it, I'm I'm charging at least double. Like wherever I pay per unit, I'm charging at least double. And it sells. Yeah, because let's say um, yeah, and I'm not gonna lie. Like the worst, the the worst markup is like candy. Okay. Because candy might cost sixty cent, and you sell it for a dollar twenty five. That's the lowest one. The rest of them are typically higher than that. You at least like, you know, triple. Um, so Kansas soda costs about 27 cent. You sell those for a dollar. Um, you know, so peanut butter crackers might cost like 15 cents or something like that. Each one you sell those for a dollar. Some people sell them for a dollar 25, like depending on, you know, again, depending on where you're at. Um, so it really just comes down to, you know, where you're at again and then what, what you sell them. Okay, let's talk location. You're in this motel. Motel at some point goes out of business. You get jammed up there. Do you get your um, vending machines back? And tell me about the process into getting into other locations. And you mentioned things like hospitals. Um, what are the best locations for anybody thinking about getting into this business to look at? I, I, off the top of my head, I got to think a hospital's got to be a pretty good one. Hospital is probably the top. That's probably the top. Really? top. So, yeah, they, it's real competitive, like with the hospitals. You got some companies that will go in and redo their like their break rooms and stuff like that, or buying flat screen TVs just to get their machines in there. So that's probably the hardest one to get into. Do you have any of your machines now in hospitals? No, I don't have any hospitals. Okay. I have any hospitals, um, mainly office buildings, uh, apartments, motels, hotels. Hotels and motels are also like that's I would say that's right under hospitals. But hospitals are definitely the top, the top, the top locations. So, so I'm assuming hotels, motels are pretty competitive. Yeah, they're competitive too. But it's this, it's so many hotels and motels. Whereas though in a hospital, uh, the hospital you might only have one hospital or two hospitals in a in a city. Like it's not going to be as many hospitals as it's going to be hotels and motels. It's just less less room, you know, up there. Most of the time they contract you so. 
if if it's one hospital and they have another one over in another part of the city, you'll end up being in both of them. You know, they're not gotcha. going, they're not going to use like multiple people. They just want to contract it out to one company and have them do all their sites. Same thing with schools, like universities, dorms, dorms. A lot of time, con- uh, contract. Dorms got to be pretty good. Yeah, we had Temple. Um, so Temple, Temple was real, real good. Uh, you know, same thing though. Know, they put you in multiple spots. But um, as far as with the with the question you asked me was, um, say that say that one more time because I, I lost it. I, th- I think I was asking you just in terms of you branching out, right? Mm-hmm. You you for one, I wanted to know: Did you get your two machines from that motel once they closed down? And then what was your next steps into getting into other locations? All right, for those those two machines, I did not get back. No, so so you lost your money. I wouldn't say I lost my money because I made a lot of money off of those machines, but I def I definitely lost the machines and then I cashed out my insurance. Okay. All right, so I did like I pulled my I pulled my money back from them, but at the point where they were, um, and at the point where I was at that time, like in my life, it just wasn't I wasn't trying to deal with it, and then it, it was hard. I tried to get them out, but it was it was it was too much. It was too much. I had to go through too much to get them out of there. The city had came and uh. Shut that, shut that spot down because they were having too many issues, um, you know, with it being open. It was a crazy. I'm not gonna lie. It was a crazy place, man. It was, a, it was a wild place. It was a lot of stuff going on in there, which made it, which made it a, uh, actually made it a good spot, like for the vending machine. A lot of people were in there doing a lot of crazy stuff all times of the day, night, which was always busy. So you know, it was just good for the machine, and it was bad for the community. So they shut it down. Gotcha. So you move on. What's your next locations? Yeah, man. My next locations were um, a high school, my old high school. I ended up, I, same, I did the same thing I did with the candy machines. I networked, talked, told people what I was doing. So I ended up landing my old high school. Um, and I had an apartment complex that I got through doing what I call cold calling. Mm-hmm. So cold calling is one of the ways I find locations. I might pick... Um, a zip no, so I might I, I pick a zip code. Like so let's say um I want I want a, uh machines in whatever area. I'm gonna pick the zip codes in that area and then I'm gonna make a list of the particular types of locations I'm looking for. So let's say I want a motel. I'm gonna pick that zip code, Google um all the motels in that zip code. It's gonna give me a little list. I'm gonna write all the phone numbers down and then I'm gonna go ahead and call every single one of those motels. I do the same thing for like multiple, you know, multiple things. But I ended up doing with using that method. I ended up finding a um, apartment complex. So I had I had my old high school the apartment complex, and I had um, that hotel all at the same time. Before I lost the hotel, how many machines were you at at that point? Six. So you're now up to six machines. How yeah. are the machines doing? Machines are doing well. I actually, um, I, at that point, I had quit my job. Because was, that's where I'm going. That's where I'm trying to, t- I, to go. I was itching to quit, man. As soon as, soon as I started making more money than I was making at work, I, I, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> but, but what ended up happening, man, that the, the hotel closed, which was like my main, that was my main spot outside of the school. The hotel and the school really like did real well. So the, the hotel closed, and then school, school obviously closed for the summer. So at that point, I only had the apartment complex left, and the apartment, the apartment complex at that time was a new construction. So I called them when they was building the building, and I approached them about, you know, having vending machines as one of their uh, amenities, you know. And so, you know, they went with it, but it wasn't that many people in there yet. So it really wasn't, you know, generating no, no serious money. So at that point, when those, two, when those two closed, I had to go back to work. Gotcha. Started pretty, pretty much start over. These are great points you bring up. Number one, I, w- I just want to highlight something you said because I, 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 I speak to my audience about this all the time. They're always asking um, a couple of questions. Hey, I never, I don't have time. You know, I want to start my business, but where am I going to find the time? I'm working a job. Number one, there's more than eight hours in a day. Just like you, when you get off work, figure out what you can do from five o'clock to one, two in the morning. So that's number one. And then people want to know, when should I quit? You just gave the answer. When you are making whatever your side business is or whatever your 
businesses, not your job, but when you're making the same amount of money or more on the side, that is when you know it's time to walk because you have a real business on your hand. Right. But I like where you're going with this story because some things that people don't think about, right, up until it hits them, you uh -huh. have vending machines in schools. Right. Well, schools are closed for two months out of the year during the summer. Obviously, your money goes down, and now you have to humble yourself and go back to work. What was that like? Man, that was hard because I really, I really, you know, because I, it's just you know, once you get it, once for real, once I got that taste of freedom, it was like, man, I, I'm not going back. But then it was like, all right, well, at that point, I still was trying to grow, but then I lost when I lost, I lost that hotel kind of like real sudden, like. It was like without warning. I just went there, and it was like whole thing was shut down. I'm like, damn, like what happened? So now at that point, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. I ended up contacting the city. The city told me um, what, what what happened. I had to contact them to even to get back in there to get uh, to try to get the machines out. And when I even got in there, I seen that it was vandalized and all that extra stuff. But yeah, so I mean, at that point, when that when that shut down, and then it was going into the summer, so the school shut down. I'm like, all right, well, I gotta, I gotta do something. Um, but on top of that, though, what made it worse? I had, I was getting married at that same time, so I actually, I, I managed to save before I even quit. I managed to save up a good amount of money. Like it was like probably like, like twenty thousand at that time, or something like that. So I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna take like fifteen of this, use it for the wedding, and then you know, I got, I still got more money coming in, so I'm cool. But then when I spent that money for the wet and all that stuff started happening, so it was like no more money was coming in. It was like, damn, what I'm gonna do? Like, so I really just um, I, one of my jobs, I I was I was on like the, what they call the sub list. So when I left, I didn't leave completely. I stayed on the sub list, so I had to come in like every few months or something like that. Um, so I just started picking up hours and uh, picking up work until I got to the point where I uh, I got some more locations and I just started rebuilding. And then the second time before I quit again, I just made sure I, I was good, good. Like, I made sure I had a, enough locations. I diversified a little bit. That's when I got into real estate by, that, by this time. I had got an got um, income property and all that good stuff. So, yeah. So, by the second time I quit, I made sure I, I had a little more going on. So, I wouldn't be in the same situation twice. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.